Hi, this is Bruce Quinn. I'm a physician and a full-time Medicare policy expert. In this video, we're going to talk about a new and exciting Medicare coverage decision that was released on Friday, October 16th for screening tests with liquid biopsy for colorectal cancer. The video will be divided in two parts, essentially. In the first part, um, we'll provide two or three minutes of overview of what happened and why it's important uh, enough to understand it and we'll close with some links to the original documents. Then in the second part for another seven or eight minutes, I'll talk about the background, the deep dive, where this came from, how it fits into existing Medicare law and uh, some other uh, interesting ins and outs. All right, so let's start with the title slide. CMS proposes rolling coverage of future colorectal cancer screening tests by liquid biopsy, that means circulating free DNA or CF DNA, circulating tumor DNA. What happened, what's new, and some background. So what happened? CMS released a proposed national coverage decision. It came out on Friday evening, October 16th. It came out after markets closed. We'll see why that's important in a couple slides. It's a proposal, it's not final, it could be adjusted. CMS has a 30-day comment period until November 15th, then they have several months to come to a final position. Now, what exactly does it contain? CMS proposes to cover liquid biopsy tests that screen for colorectal cancer if they have FDA approval and if they have at least 74% sensitivity and 90% specificity. Plus, finally, they have to be endorsed by the US Public Services Task Force or by a major guideline or association. So that will probably be the gateway to the date when your coverage at Medicare is effective. Once you get covered for this new test, it'll be priced by conventional means, lab fee schedule, crosswalk gap, gap fill, or uh, other methods for pricing a lab test. There's a quirk here. The index liquid biopsy test for this NCD is the epigenomics epipro colon test which itself does, actually, does not actually meet the CMS criteria that were proposed. Um, it's like if you were 24 years old and you proposed a voting law and you got the voting law, but it's for 25 year olds uh, and wouldn't include you. Uh, but it's a proposed decision, so it could change. There are major tests in the pipeline from big companies, Exact Sciences, Garden Health. These are companies with literally 10, 15 billion market caps. Um, and they're doing FDA trials for about 10,000 patients with both the blood test, the new blood test, and a colonoscopy gold standard test. Here's an example of the exact sciences uh, stock price shooting up uh, from about $70 to $100 in September. That was a bump in market cap of about $5 billion. And it's because on that day at a conference, they reported good data as they're uh, introducing their uh, or developing their colon cancer screening test. Now, CMS usually does not cover new preventive tests willy-nilly. They have to have FDA approval, so there are no lab-developed tests. They have to have US Public Services Task Force endorsement with an exception for colon cancer screening. So we're in a little exception pathway here. Then they have to have NCD review, uh, and that's what Cologuard got in about 2014, and it's, it's what's happening now again for the, the second time. The NCD review can often take six to 12 months. So in short, uh, there are a lot of hurdles from developing the test, getting FDA approval, and to finally becoming a Medicare benefit. This uh, is to step back and give you the 20,000 foot view for just a few seconds. So in Medicare, you can have all kinds of tests, drugs, surgeries, procedures, therapies, and you ask, are they for current symptoms of disease? If the answer is yes, then it's a regular coverage decision. It's treating a disease or diagnosing a disease that you think you have. If the answer is no, it's not for current symptoms and signs of disease, then you are thrown into the preventive services pathway up here, and it's a whole different area of Medicare policy. There are three ways to get a preventive services benefit. Number one, a named legislative benefit passed in law by Congress, signed by the president. That's where pap smears, uh, PSA testing mammography live. Doesn't happen very often. Uh, then there's a legislative option to go directly to an NCD for preventive benefit. 
but that's only possible for prostate technologies and colon cancer technologies. Finally, there is a wide but slow pathway, which is any service endorsed by the US Public Services Task Force, plus also CMS opens and completes an NCD, and each of those steps could take two years and they occur sequentially. So that's why we call it a, a slow pathway. The new CMS pathway and the proposed decision on October 16th, that's right in the middle of channel two, uh, as, you, as you probably realize. How do you get to these different uh, pathways? Well, for the legislative benefit, you gotta invoke patient groups, patient and disease associations, American Cancer Society, you got to get voters interested, lobbyists, action on the Hill, senators, congressmen, get your legislative benefit. If you want to get the prostate or colon cancer NCD for a specific technology, uh, outside stakeholders need to convince the CMS leadership that it would be a good idea. Again, Cologuard got that in about 2014, and uh, that's what's happening now again. In the third pathway, First, the service has to be approved and published and rise to the agenda of the U.S. Public Services Task Force. The U.S. PSTF then has to actually do a report. That takes a year or two or three. Then stakeholders have to convince CMS to uh, look into this as a new Medicare benefit, and that could take a couple of years. We're closing out the introductory two or three minutes. So here you've got the tracking sheet. I'll link to this down below in the YouTube video. You've got the draft proposal and it's got a comment box at the top. That comment box will be active for about uh, 30 days. You can see a little picture of that at the bottom. And then there's my blog, Discoveries in Health Policy. Look at the October 16th date for the written uh, article and, and these links again. So if you've heard enough, you can step away. If you wanna stick around for seven or eight minutes, I'll give you the deep dive. In the beginning, Medicare was signed by Lyndon Johnson in 1965, and it covered several categories of providers. You had to be a physician, a hospital, a clinical laboratory. You had to be something Medicare would recognize to get in the door. Then you had to provide a medical or other health service, and that's defined in a list. It's physician services, hospital services, ambulance services, diagnostic test services, physical therapy services, and so on. <coughs> so you have to be what's called a benefit category there in the middle. Then there are things that are not covered. Eyeglasses, not covered. Hearing aids, dental care, not covered by Medicare, by law. And things that are not reasonable and necessary to treat a disease are not covered, cannot be covered unless there's some other action. So they figured out early on that a pap smear could be run by a clinical laboratory. That's a Medicare provider. It's a diagnostic test. That's a Medicare coverage category. And it could be the service of a physician but it's not necessary to treat disease. A healthy woman gets a pap smear. She has no signs and symptoms of cervical cancer. So she does not have signs and symptoms of a disease. So it fails to be something to treat signs and symptoms of disease. Signs and symptoms of disease does not occur in the Medicare statute, but they came to the idea pretty early on decades ago that Medicare does not pay for preventive care, quote unquote, uh, although the statute does not say that point blank. Let's look at the history of mammography. Uh, it was introduced by legislation on the Hill in 1991. This was expanded again, annual screening with no copays in 1997. Uh, in that era, 1997, you got other benefits like pap smears, bone mass density for osteoporosis, colorectal screening, testing, uh, all those came in in 1997. This is what the regulations look like for Medicare mammography. 42 Code of Federal Regulations 410.34. Look it up. No, don't look it up. It reads like tax law. It's very dull. Here's the statutory benefit for colorectal cancer screening tests. Colorectal cancer screening test is defined in law by Congress to be as fecal occult blood test or screening flexible sigmoidoscopy or screening colonoscopy. That's probably the most familiar or D, other tests or procedures with frequency and payment limits as the secretary determines are appropriate in consultation with appropriate organizations. This is the channel these new colon tests are going to. It's a colon test and it is determined by the secretary to be appropriate in consultation with organizations. Um, 15 years ago, Medicare did that for fecal immunotesting. That was a new type of fecal immunotesting. Um, then in about 2014, Medicare did it for the Cologuard test, which is now a $250 million a year Medicare test. 
um, one of the largest tests in the Medicare system. Uh, and it's looking at now for liquid biopsies. The other pathway, the broad and uh, slow pathway is from Medicare Improvement Act of 2008. And this is any services, any of 50, 60, 70 services that have a US public services A or B rating and via a national coverage de determination, Medicare determines they're appropriate for the Medicare population. So to wrap up before we talk about some of the uh, flies in the ointment, you've got channel one services written in law by Congress enumerated in the statute. Channel two, only for colon and prostate, those are technologies that Medicare can directly do an NCD on. Number three, any kind of preventive service Maybe it's a new test for ovarian cancer, pancreatic cancer, thyroid cancer, a preventive test, not mentioned in statute, but you gotta get a US Public Services Task Force Committee interested in it. Then you gotta get an NCD. Wait for years, that's channel three. Flies in the ointment. So the US Public Services Task Force timeline, they only update their recommendations at four to 10 year intervals. That process can take two years, I've watched it. Um, there's no mechanism for quickly doing a review in a brand new category. If anything, a brand new category is probably a bigger barrier to getting started. New categories are virtually unknown. Um, lung cancer screening is probably with the CT scan. That's probably one of the newest categories, uh, but there are a few of them. Then it's unclear what outcomes data and replications U.S. Public Services Task Force would require to approve something that's truly new, and they may not know until they see it and talk about it and uh, investigate it. They may not know what their exactly standards are going to be. Uh, U.S. Public Services Task Force is unlikely to seriously review a non-FDA approved test, and CMS nationally will not do so. Then you have the NCD timeline. There's a variable consideration period before opening an NCD, and we just saw it. The epigenomics company probably was starting to talk to CMS going back to its FDA approval several years ago. The formal letter for this proposed NCD is dated February 2019. Medicare did not act on it until January of 2020. The proposed decision is now in the fall of 2020 and it won't get finalized until sometime in 2021. So the NCD process from the request to the final literally takes several years. There is something called parallel review where Medicare sort of collapses its process and lays it on top of the uh, FDA process. So there's uh, some time savings, but it's only done that twice in five years. It's not easy to do that. If you have a non-colon, non-prostate preventive test, the CMS is gonna do parallel review because it can't start doing anything until after that US public services step. So here's another summary. You've got your product. You've spent three, four, five years in FDA trials, FDA approval, venture capital. You get the US Public Services gateway. That takes an unknown number of years. Then you go to the NCD. That takes a year or two or three. Then you get to the Medicare market. So that's been a real hurdle. That's why it's so exciting to have this new NCD put in place today. It'll just sit there and wait for you. And if you meet the requirements like the 74% and the 90% rule, the FDA approval, the FDA label, bang, uh, you will be covered without any of these long delays. Very exciting. Should be a, a, a stimulus to investment and give a lot of certainty to developers as well. Now, there are some gray areas. I'll just touch on this. Um, bone mass measurement or DEXA screening for osteoporosis is often considered a preventive benefit, but it's actually historically defined as a specially regulated treatment for disease. So it's covered for estrogen deficient women. Is that a disease? They, they don't exactly say yes, but they don't exactly say no. Bone mass measurement is covered for things like hyperthyroidism. Well, that's a disease. So you don't need to have a preventive benefit. You just treat the disease. It's covered if you've got daily steroid treatments for more than three months. You can get a bone mass density scan. But of course, that's also part of the management of disease, not really a preventive benefit. So I just want to flag here, if you get into this, you'll often stumble across some sort of a gray area between is that definitely diagnostic or, or definitely preventative. So here's a proposal. And it's actually made stronger by what just happened this week. I, I wrote this slide the first time in August, but we should just let Medicare do an NCD for preventive service, regardless of the US Public Services Task Force and its weights and its backlogs. 
couple reasons for this. In the current state, a Medicare NCD review after the US Public Services Task Force is gonna review exactly the same papers and reach exactly the same conclusions in the same 20 or 30 pages of text. If there are 10 papers in a topic, US Public Services Task Force will summarize them and discuss them for 20 pages. Then they hand it over to Medicare and Medicare repeats exactly the same process. So gaining the approval on the US Public Services Task Force and a Medicare approval does not really accomplish too much. Uh, they would say they're looking at Medicare for people over 65, but um, you know, it probably doesn't require an extra three years. Then we've just had a wonderful example. For about 20 years, Medicare has been able to do, uh, since 1997, um, an NCD for a new colorectal technology or a new prostate technology. And Medicare has shown with those two options, it can make a very prudent decision. It's only done new colon cancer technologies uh, three times in 23 years. It hasn't done any prostate cancer technologies in 23 years. It hasn't found one it's ready to do yet or impressed enough to do. So Medicare can handle this authority to make a direct NCD for preventive benefit perfectly well. And they've proven it for a couple of decades. So let's just let them make decisions on preventive benefits um, as they see fit. So we'll remove this restriction. And if it's an ovarian FDA approved test or a pancreatic FDA approved test, uh, let Medicare go at it in the prudent way that they've shown they do. So in summary, Medicare prevented benefits uh, go back to 1991, several decades into the existence of the program. They were enhanced in 97 and again in 2008, but the agency is still struggling how to handle out of the box innovations, how to handle the different bottlenecks and delays of multi years. And I think by the October 16th decision we just saw, putting in a framework for covering future benefits uh, on a rolling basis, very encouraging, and I hope you take a chance to read this benefit. And uh, if you uh, are interested in it, feel free to give the Medicare agency a comment in the next 30 days. Thank you very much.